are going to have this panel. We invited to this panel to four of them. We have more than 15 films. So imagine there's that, that amount of uh, at least create. There's more because there's collective creations, in fact, that we'll see. Today we have, for example, Nicolas and Alexandra. Uh, I'm going to start like presenting each one, but directly give the voice because we don't have too much time and this is going to be a panel uh, for the next um, 30 minutes. So um, I'm going just to uh, quick, quickly present uh, Alexandra, Alexandra Pomarico. She's an independent creator, researcher and educator working at the intersection of arts, pedagogy and community. She's the co-founder of Free Home University, an artistic and pedagogical experiment of sharing knowledge on sharing knowledge by living in common, the Translocal Ecoversity Alliance. Alessandra Research currently focuses on eco ecology on, of knowledge, care, and relational epistemologies. She recent, uh, well, she has a lot of projects, but one of her recent projects include Firefly Frequencies Radio. I want to stop here because I'm going to also um, give, um, put the, all this information in the chat. So we have this information and some links that is very important because Firefly's frequencies, in fact, uh, and I'm going to open right now for Alessandra to speak. And then also uh, with Nico, that it's an artist, a punk anti-fascist member of Shot the Lad, the film we are also hosting in this, um, in this festival. And uh, one of the reasons you are all invited to both Alessandra and Nico here, but also, I, I wanted to stop there in fireflies, fireflyfrequencies.org because this is, I don't know, like a twin uh, brother, sister web for uh, uh, supported by Ecoversities, but not just that, it's like uh, also our uh, audio on, learn, on learnings there. So Alessandra, Nico, today uh, you are invited for this uh, um, panel. I would like to hear from you. How are you feeling? Um, how this, um, I suppose, the conversation has multiple levels. Maybe you can remember uh, uh, from your film how you were feeling or the moment of creation. We also ask you um, to co-design our um, conversation to today. And uh, you had a very, very cool insights or at least an idea of uh, what what we we can create as a conversation today alessandra please uh, also uh, take that question or hypothesis you brought and um, present yourselves and talk a little bit hello hello how are you thank you camille and thank you everyone to be here so nice to be all together really honored to be part of uh, yet another conference is an exciting time for us a time where we can meet and exchange and then we already know that so much will follow up so yes um, um, okay we, within free home uh, universities we we use different approach we work with artists and educators and we work along and on the side of communities of struggle and communities of practice. So each time each session is different, is co-designed with the participant, is led by different artists. So depending on who is there with us, we may follow different process and different approach. To stay on this topic of the audiovisual, we have, of course, uh, um, <clears throat> engaged with these practices, and especially we have uh, part uh, in the trailer, you saw a glimpse of our film, People of Flower, um, so Salt and water. water, that was done when Nikolai's collective Stodelat, which is a group of uh, filmmakers, philosophers, choreographers, artists, uh, poets from Russia, they came to Italy. And we create a session with a group of acti activists, farmers, activists, and land defenders, young artists, activists, and a group of refugees, migrants, and displaced people. 
In our free home university, the main tool of learning is actually living together, sharing space, sharing life in common, whatever in a short, uh, temporary, intense uh, collective um, moment of cohabitation. So we were all sharing a couple of houses and we were living together for three weeks uh, in the community of farmers that have been part of our uh, community of free home University the Casa delle Agriculture in Castiglione d'Otranto. But maybe Nico, as he was, uh, he is part of the collective who did um, the film, who will speak a little more about that. I posted on the just today, and actually they made this great effort to have uh, this new series published on Arts Everywhere, which is a platform online we are both editors. They made a page with also the film and additional text, which are part of our uh, book, uh, When the Roots Start Moving, which Yeyo here has been uh, started to translate in Spanish. And it's a book in which we resonate with Zapatismo. We, as in uh, Western uh, non-indigenous urban uh, communities, and what Zapatismo has taught to us and how it is to learn through their lens and their proposals. I say this because the film actually starts also as a way of sharing the fables of Subcomandante Marco and also the 13 demands of Marcos and the 13 demands of the Zapatistas as a way to speak about our own struggle in this particular group. So struggles of people fighting to protect the land and the work, to work the land without uh, exploitation of the soil or exploitation of labor. Uh, people displaced uh, crossing the Mediterranean to try to find a safe place in Italy. And, uh, and artists and activists to, that try to to be in service of community and try to to find uh, to figure it all out and find new ways to to make uh, a world where many words can can exist. Uh, maybe you say yeah, something. No, no, no. Uh, absolutely. Just to <clears throat> to say that uh, starting from the the and the provocation that uh, we were sharing a little ahead of this session yeah. today with Franco and Camilo and Sierra, uh, we were speaking about um, um, a little bit from our point of view, from our practices, how everything we are doing is in this teleology of learning together. There, um, there is no, um, um, I mean, uh, the big question about pedagogies and education and learning and sharing knowledge is always uh, the, the question of hierarchy that we cannot avoid questioning again and again, but how the process of learning together also include the knowledge of those who are more experienced than us. For example, as a group, we were learning a lot from the stories of people who crossed the sea, the knowledge that belongs to them but we have learned from them and from what they share. So in this, in this situation, they clearly were our teachers and we bow our head for this knowledge that they share with us. So in this combination of learning as a necessity, the teacher will come at some point and we have to learn modestly and uh, humbly from those who know more. Yes, and the story, just to respond a little bit to what uh, Franco in our chat preparing was uh, uh, proposing as a question, a uh, question of, of course, uh, in cinema or in the audiovisual, there is a director, there is an audience, there is a producer, there is a receiver very often this type of work is very hierarchic, hierarchically organized. In this case, uh, the proposal of Stodellat was to try to also embody the Zapatista principles within the making of the film. 
So there is, for example, in the link I sent you, a beautiful text of um, Saplia, Olga, who is uh, the director in the group, that explain how she makes film zapatistically, a little bit uh, paraphrasing Jean-Luc Godard, who used to say making film politically, she says making film zapatistically. So, just, just to underline, uh, making films politically instead of making uh, political films or films about politics. These are two different things in methodology mm -hmm. that is um, implemented, implied in the process of making. So it's not the film about the Zapatistas and how great their struggle is. It's the film that tries to resonate with the principles that are resonating within our own community. Not mm -hmm. copying, not exploiting, but resonating and trying to rethink ourselves from, mm -hmm. from this process. Yes, so the, um, there was no script. The story emerged by us living together. And uh, of course, um, in this process where we were doing a lot of somatic practice, games, uh, uh, living together, celebration, cooking, sharing our stories. And one day, one of the local activists, Donatella of Casa dell'Agricoltura, she proposed to teach us how to make fresh pasta. And from making fresh pasta, we were starting to also make figurines and creatures that became a part of the film. So the film has three levels, if you want. One level is sort of a small et ethnographies, uh, um, stories of the participant that share their own biography through the struggle. Through the struggle. Another level is the fiction level in which this character that are done of dough uh, and on this uh, common land that we draw on a piece of, uh, on a table, so it becomes us creating a common land and what does it mean to live in a shared place? And um, the third level is our own process mm -hmm. of living together, working together, try to find a way of uh, uh, find our commonalities beyond and within our differences of privilege, difference of background, difference of uh, um, geographies mm -hmm. and so on. But also I wanted to say a little bit, uh, expanding uh, Camilo's uh, invitation to share with you Firefly Frequencies. It's actually uh, the recent baby of, uh, uh, of Ecoversities and our friends, comrades, artists from um, uh, from, Sic from Sicily, and uh, we also, with Alessandra, we participate. Uh, uh, and for that radio, the pedagogical moment is around the sound and uh, around the process of listening, but also dialectically, uh, the listening process and the making the sound process are both important. They in, uh, converge. As, as a learning, um, as a learning, as a way of learning, one of the ways. So um, I would invite you later to, we will, we will definitely share all the sources uh, among our groups. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how we, we need to go. I think we need to pass the word yes. to someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that was the idea. This is, uh, there's tons of uh, uh, ways of watching and also inviting you to present your work. So thank you very much to make all this possible I'm, I'm i'm like especially invite people to go to fireflies one that it's one of your twin creations and uh, but uh, also in this film festival to go and see this film that uh, you will feel as a as a close to alessandra nico and all the people that were there it's a a very a very beautiful and touching piece um that i want to also connect now uh, with franco uh, that we we were inviting him uh, uh, here also because he has an interview that touch, uh, touch, touches us, uh, moves us lots also because it, it's part of what we call the Ecoverse family, um, not just Franco but also Gustavo. In fact, um, uh, Nico made a piece in the Fireflies, a podcast also um, honoring this year 
uh, from Gustavo's uh, when he passed away. But uh, well, I will let Franco to make uh, the bridge of this conversation panel to that. I want to present him very shortly. Franco um, uh, is a social activist, unprofessionalized intellectual, unschooled father, co-creator of collaborative projects and documentalists of alternatives around the planet, collaborating with processes of social transformation for more than 20 years now. He coordinates the Global Tapestry of Alternatives, an international process connecting networks of radical alternatives. You can find all this information uh, in the in the web page of the Reimagining Education. I'm going to share it also here, but especially you're going to hear from Franco also. He, he came uh, to this conversation and not just as the creator of uh, this beautiful film. He's also an ecoversitarian, as Alessandra and Nico are, uh, very active in our network. So, Franco, welcome. Where are you? You're in Argentina? Yes. Hi, Cami. Hi, all. Hi to see. Nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, I hope this goes well. My internet is not very good over yes, here. Yes. Uh, maybe I, I, if I disappear, I will reconnect. So, yeah, I know we don't have too much time just to say, I mean, I'm kind of uh, yeah, enjoying the discovery that I'm, I have a, a film in this film festival. I just realized that. Uh, and, and this kind of film, this is very humble interview. Uh, I, I had with, with Gustavo some years ago, have a, I think a nice story. I mean, I just will tell you briefly um, uh, that basically, yeah, I visited him uh, in, in Ritierra, Oaxaca uh, in 2019. And yeah, we did that interview and then we continued with our own stuff. I mean, we were doing some projects. Actually, that was kind of the year uh, the Global Tapestry of Alternatives was launched. Uh, so we were connected with many different things we were doing, uh, different projects, but the, the interview itself was never published because I just yeah, stored it in a hard drive and, and then I just leave Oaxaca. When I re returned to Argentina, I discovered that the hard drive was stolen. So I, I lost the interview and I was really like uh, sad about that. And maybe months, I think one year after I received an email from someone that was in Oaxaca, I was in Argentina and uh, to to a lot of effort to uh, get back this hard disk that was was stolen in the airport. So that's uh, a long story, but I mean, uh, a lot of things happen and uh, many people help, uh, even some eco Italians like Yeyo were involved <laughs> in recovering that hard disk. And yeah, yeah. and so when, when, one year after Gustavo died, um, some uh, one month ago, uh, I decided, okay, I need to publish this uh, like a kind of, Honor, honor him, and I yeah I did the the final edition of that piece, but actually I wasn't uh, expecting to create a kind of film, so or something like that. So I mean I think his his I mean his testimony is like uh, very important for our discussions, and actually I I I mean I I can continue talking about what he says, but I think many many of his views are shared by many here and and others that are not here. Many of the people that are already dead, uh, uh, that um, I think have many critical points that we, I mean, our generation have been lost, lo losing over the time. I mean, about the, the critical perspective on, on our approach, on our understanding to pedagogy, education, learning, and many concept that, concepts that we have been discussing. So uh, actually, the, the movie is this movie, this film, this interview starts, I ask to Gustavo specifically, to to for, from his perspective uh, that already I already knew, but I think was important that he expressed it in a very clear way the different conceptualizations they have for certain concepts like for example what is different between a schooling the schooling education etc. And um, and I know that his uh, many of his ideas are not I mean uh, from him I mean he was like a, a part of a collective conversation. Um, and I think that our kind of uh, responsibility at this point is to try to bring uh, uh, those past conversation to the present, because uh, as I said before, we have been missing many of that. And I think repeating many of the errors of the past, uh, 
for example, I can myself inscribe in that in that same problem. Uh, some like ten years ago, I made I co-created a, a very successful film about uh, education. Uh, I think I will also had very successful in terms of you know level of reproductions, views, all that. That's called the forbidden education. Uh, so uh, now, like one decade after that, I, I, I see. I mean, clearly see. I mean, all the erratas, all the problems, all the all the missings that we that we did, and and actually, I see. I see many problems in the way we create audiovisual materials. Um, actually, now, I mean, not not only in that moment. I mean, uh, that's part of the the question I threw to the group, just kind of a provocation, and to start the, the thing. I mean, actually, I have more and more doubts about the capacity or the possibility of using uh, audiovisual uh, as a as a tool. And actually, I'm seeing more and more that uh, audiovisual is becoming a kind of a systemic, systematic creation. And I'm using here the concept of system uh, as a, a confrontation of the concept of tool, recovering the idea of Ivan Illich in tool for, for conviviality. I mean, basically, put it in very short words, the problem of losing the control of, of, of the tool because of the way we are seeing uh, audiovisual language expanding and creating a, a, a pedagogization del mundo, a pedagogization of the world. I mean, the spreading of audiovisual, the way the way is uh, changing our mindset, uh, actually, uh, or the way that audiovisual is going more and more created as something that is synthetic by machines, by, by uh, inter, inter, um, artificial intelligence. All that problems I think we are lacking a space of discussion and reflecting on 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 the on the language itself. I celebrate this space uh, for maybe starting some kind of space for this kind of more deep conversations on how well can we think critically about the possibility of the language. That's one side of the conversation, I think, and the other is about the problem of pedagogies. Uh, the problem. I think we continue repeatedly the idea of creating new pedagogies without thinking what. I mean, I mean the, the the logic that is behind pedagogies and expansion, the problem of expansion of of pedagogy, uh, how that expands the ideology and the methodology of of education. Um, all many of these that I'm saying can be maybe rethink in the light of the ideas of Ivan Illich, Ever Framer, Gustavo Esteban, and others. And I think that we need to make an effort to to think critically and be able to stand up on the on the shoulders of of of, of those people to see. Uh, farther, not just to keep doing the same. Actually, I'm very, I'm very concerned about the idea of if we can rethink or reimagine education. Actually, I think more and more that we need to drop and escape from education, like Gustavo say in that interview. Uh, but how do we escape from education? Um, so all that are questions that are think I think we are not uh, collectively uh, asking. It's just maybe. A, a side note, maybe a bibliographic note, but I think they are main central. Um, and have been, have been around for more than 50 years, and we continue just creating alternative education spaces that are reproduction of schools uh, in, in different ways. Uh, and just to finish and not to come, I mean, uh, concentrate on or make a uh, monologue uh, or take more time, I, I, I just will, following off a kind of example that Nico just said about the, the experience that I think this is really really interesting because it is inspired in the in the in the rooted process of Zapatistas and and they as as Nico said they are not trying to celebrate them I, I think they're trying to learn from them and and what I I just take note down uh, that is very important that is some something usually missed in the discussion about education is in, in the example he he gave about the immigrants I, that's what I understood uh, they learn from them. And probably, and they, and they, there are people prob uh, probably. I am assuming that they are very under-schooled, under-educated people by the official, by the official way of thing. And and that continue. I mean, that ideology that over-education, more education. I mean, consuming more education is not being criti criticized enough. Actually, I see a lot of a lot of fellows, eco-versitarians, not eco-versitarians, activists, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, <laughs> trying to get their PhD. And I mean. Um, keep reproducing the idea of uh, if I consume more education, I, I invest in myself and and all the problem that all the hierarchy problem that it, that's continued to do. So um, I see a lot of contradiction, in, firstly in myself, but I think that's important to bring those contradictions and not just to celebrate us and celebrate our creations, but to see the problem of how we are reproducing this hierarchy and the 
uh, inequalities that education uh, brings. So the question is, or I mean, they have been around for many years, but nobody is putting in the center. Uh, this, or I, I don't see it on so much. Is education is a way of creating inequality. That's that's kind of a thing that have been going around. But I mean, we are still thinking. Oh, can we reimagine, reformat education to making something good of it? And 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 I think we need more time and to put that question in the center and work around that. Uh, with audiovisual and with other, maybe with other ways of, of, of communicating ourselves. Uh, yeah, many, many things to say, but yeah, just stopping there. Thank you for listening and thank you a lot to Camilo and Sierra and others. I know that this kind of uh, encounters have a lot of effort and background production thing that are very valuable and it's a gift. And thank you all. Thank you also, Franco. Mm -hmm. You are a great uh, weaver also of all these networks. So thank you for bringing all those, also the questions, contradictions you were uh, bringing also a, a, a big invitation to go and see and, and watch not just this uh, interview, also lots of work that uh, we are linking uh, through, through this festival. So you can see Franco's and Alessandra's and Nico's um, work that I want to say we will have uh, after like around in the 20 minutes we will uh, have the opportunity if you want to stay and go into individual rooms with these creators and also what they if you have if you have uh, any question or any of you want to continue with the conversation they are bringing um towards this 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 main this main uh, moment that we will end in some 15 minutes uh, before, we have another invitation uh, also to speak with Doerte. She will have also a room after, but first I want to present her uh, to this panel. Uh, Doerte, she's in Barcelona right now. Uh, and Doerte, fascination, Bert, fascination, sorry for my pronunciation of her name, uh, is to uncover how different face, facets of human physicality relate to sociopolitical transformation and ecological awareness. She enjoys audiovisual media for presenting research results and believes that we cannot think, perceive, or speculate about the future of human societies, education, health, or work without taking into account more the sensoriality of our moving, sensing bodies. Uh, she has uh, for um, she's she's inviting us to to watch two of her films in this um, in film festival. We are very honored to have uh, dating a tree. Dating is a composition. Uh, you will find. I'm going to just put this in the chat. And also ecologies of embodiment, co-editing with the more than human. You see, um, I'm welcome to Doerte. Uh, I want to also connect with uh, our conversation um, before this, this panel, preparing this panel, where you also brought uh, like a question that how does audiovisual enable accessing somatic pres presences differ differently? Presences differently. Please uh, uh, develop on that because how does it dissolve or reinforce somatic? hierarchies in pedagogy and beyond. I'm going to put this. So please connect all of this, what I'm presenting with, um, with your own voice. Thank you very much for being here and also with your films in this film festival. Yeah, thank you, Camilo and, and Sierra for inviting me. And what a pleasure to hear from Alessandra Ninko and Franco. Um, so yeah. What I would like to do is I'm in Barcelona, so most of you know that's on the Mediterranean Sea, and for me over the last years, oh, there we are, um, Yemanja, the goddess of the water, has been very important, and I have here a blue candle, which I'm, there you are, you can see it now, um, and so just to say that the water from the, the Mediterranean Sea is, is present, um, and yeah, so my my background is in anthropology. And as Camilo just said, I've been, I think now for over 20 years, trying to, to sort of understand and sense interconnections of body and land and body with, with more than human. 
And I now use the term ecosomatics uh, to describe that. And somatics, I think, will or soma will be familiar to, to you as another expression of body, but looking more at the, you know, the interior perspective, what we feel and, and sense. And ecosomatics, as the, the prefix suggests, sort of connects that more explicitly with ecology and you know, thinking of the human body as part of something. Um, and, and for me, it's really also this functional and felt, which of course. Um, coming from academia and knowing that, you know, academics stop somewhere here, um, or most of them, not all of them, obviously, um, is, is something really important. And I had the privilege, pleasure, and incredible experience of writing my PhD with a group called the Baka in Gabon in Central Africa. And the Baka are egalitarian hunter foragers. And I mean, what is egalitarianism? It's much more in this context than the sort of general political term or political notion that we associate with it. It is a, at least a socio-political concept. It's also an ecological concept about demand sharing. And for me, I mean, I've had many years now of trying to put into words what I experienced, what was special, what was unique, what was different. And, and this, this idea of ecosomatics has, has also helped me um, in that. And in, in, you know, what we also know now is like, it's, it's, it's the living embodied way of doing power with, not power over. So power is something that is traditionally at least set in gendered coalitions and um, is something that is kept churning, it's alive. Power never rests with anybody. So there's no way you can have a win-win situation because power never stays in one place. Power is constantly moving. And singing and dancing together are key ways of keeping the power moving. Um, so that's a huge topic. And, and I hope that's enough to just sort of bring alive a little bit that I, I guess, as I said, for all these years, I try to, to bring, put this quality into words because most people, like if I show photos, you know, it's like, oh, they're not primitive. You know, they wear clothes and, and fighting the stereotypes that even people who want to be aware have about hunter gatherers is, you know, that takes like an hour or a day or a week before you can actually get to what is, is, is important. Um, so I, I wrote a book about all this, which was, you know, the, the, the attempt to sort of find a way somewhere in between academia and, and the more than. And the reason that book exists is because the trees from the, the little village where I lived, they, they were the ones holding me. They were the ones kicking my butt in those moments where I thought, I don't want to write a book. I want to do something completely different. They were the ones literally that I felt here in my home in Barcelona, holding me and making sure that this book got written. Um, and I've done various other things. The two things that I, as I said, I feel very privileged to, to be part of here is um, the one piece called Dating a Tree, Dating a Composition, which is a collaboration with Roxana Nibadit, which we did for a symposium, um, an online exhibition called Fabulation for Future, uh, International Committee Standing with the Earth. Um, and yeah, which, which speaks about our personal relationships with trees and um, in an urban context for Roxana during the, the pandemic and for me as a way of escaping male machismo. And that was, was, was a really powerful process to, to actually put that into film. Um, and the second piece, which you saw, is um, the editorial, 
which again is a collaboration with um, Rafael Rufo, and as we say, with the more than human. And it's for an academic journal, but which is quite special. It's called the Journal of Embodied Research. And it's uh, for, for those of you who know in academia, it's really important for things to be peer reviewed. And the aim of the journal is, although it's not written text, but you know, video and audio visual, to still go through a process of peer review and say, hey, you know, your visual is pretty, but actually it can be much more um, beautiful and, you know, communicate better what you're trying to say by having a review process, which tries to follow at least certain aspects of, of academic publishing. Um, and it's also open access, which of course, for again, for those who know, like, Traditionally, academic articles are published behind uh, paywalls, so you have to pay sometimes absurd amounts of money um, to, to read about things which have already been publicly financed through tax money. And so the fact of doing something open access is a small step of trying to, to work against that. Um, and the journal was conceived as, uh, the main editor is Ben Spatz, I also want to say that, um, as, a, as he, Ben is a, is a dancer and a performer and a, and a theatre person, uh, but in an academic context. And of course, again, dance and, and, and you know, bodily practices are not academically accepted and valued and it's also really difficult to to write about dance you know you can write 100 pages um and do one minute in in audio visual and you will understand whereas even after reading 100 pages you may not so doing a a, a journal is a way of you know also just living the medium again in an academic context and also allowing the methodology, all the research that's done through performance, through, and we've already heard about this, through the different arts that we, we know, to allow that as a methodology to find more academic recognition. Um, so Ben invited Raphael Rufo and me to, to you know, do this special edition um, entitled Ecologies of Embodiment. And um, as I said, the editorial is, is shown here, which gives you also the, the opportunity to see the amazing pieces that were submitted. Um, and, and it was such a, yeah, a privilege again, to, to be allowed to work with these pieces and to, to collaborate, um, sorry, edit all that into a, 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 a special edition. And what you actually see in the trailer is by Jessica Marion Barr, Jen Cole, and um, Alfonso. And going back to taking all that back to the somatics, the eco-somatics, um, what for us was the challenge, or again, the pleasure, was to look for these somatic qualities, eco-somatic qualities in the contributions, and to try and help the um the the authors bring that to life how we relate to land and how we relate to each other in different ways and put that in the video because a lot of them started off with a lot of academic texts and citations like we had screens of you know text with academic citations you're like hey if you that you can just put in an article the whole point is to try and bring you know the 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 knowledge that we do have, which is you know in that academic format, into a mode which is you know more widely accessible because it's open access, because it's audio visual, because anybody in the world can click on the JER website and look at these you know academic articles. Um, so that was an incredible process, um, which I could talk about forever, but. <laughs> Um, just to sort of have three points, one that that's my you know real interest also through my work with the backer and 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 everything else is this you know this direct transmission at sensorial level, um, and and these were the questions I was asking. Like on the one hand, it opens up the sensorial 
to communication, to transmission, to exchange. And at the same time, we have to be really careful, and this was also our work as editors, that we don't then use the audiovisual to just reinstate somatic hierarchies, i.e. humans over other humans, over non-human animals, over plants, over minerals, over microbes. And that we really, and that's where the work also becomes decolonial, to really make sure that we look at what is power with, what is power over, what is, you know, reinstating hierarchies in all these invisible ways that we're often not unaware of. Where are we really cracking those and learning differently and, and opening up into a different, you know, pedagogies? And... For me, this is where it connects with, with um, what Alessandra um, and Mika were speaking about this, you know, melt, making films politically. I would say, you know, making films ecosomatically, like, you know, how does, does that connect? Yeah. Um, and with, with what Franco was saying, you know, to think critically about language. Again, how can ecosomatic awareness help us in that criticism and you know what I would say from my experience with the backer exactly that we have to go way beyond language uh, into these realms of communicating with the more than human you know dancing and singing with trees and other plants um, and and really different ways of social organization which allow us to, to, to do power with in, in ways that our ancestors have known for millennia. And this is not some kind of, you know, hippie, esoteric, new age, whatever cliche way of thinking about humanity. There's a lot of scientific evidence and also wisdom traditions that show how we have been able to do power with for a long, long time. So that's where I'll end. Berthe, thank you very much. You brought all the embodiment of the bodies. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Can you stay a little bit more after? Because in some minutes we are going to uh, move to other. So we are going to have also a third room if you want to uh, continue talking with Doerte. As I was telling you uh, in the chat, we are going to pass to that moment where you will have some minutes. It depends. It will be very free. It will be maximum on, on the 30 minutes more because they need uh, this room, some room after. But you will have three rooms to talk first with Alessandra or Nico in a second room with Franco, or you can uh, go to a third room and uh, talk a little bit more with Doerte. Franco, you, you, you want to, um, we are closing this moment, but please, Franco, uh, you have your, your hand up. Okay. With, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a small comment. I mean, because I think this uh, what Duarte was sharing is a very, I mean, very rich comment. And just to share a reflection, I know we don't have time, but just open up a question and then we see what happens with that. Is that I usually see, I mean, this kind of approach of embodiness and uh, the, the issue of soma and the not more, more than human and not human beings, all that, I think is a very important approach. Uh, but at the same time, the contradiction that I see in, in this, I mean, when appears the, the issue of audiovisual, actually in this practice that we are engaged in now, is how, I mean, how can we, uh, I mean, if it's possible at all to um, confront the issue of hierarchies, since we are doing at this same, at this very moment, uh, destroying that non-human beings with our, I mean, this streaming way of, I mean, of communication that we, they, they, I mean, all the infrastructure, all the, I mean, the, I mean, the lithium, the minerals, the energy that we're consuming in a way, I mean, the, the way uh, audiovisual technically is spread over the world right now is very different than that was done 20 or 60 years ago. I mean, I mean, the, the issue of the infrastructure is always, uh, um, like put it in, in, in a level that is not important and actually that's the eco, ec, ecological impact of the existence of audiovisual and more and more audiovisual more and more visuals uh, are basically uh, expanding that and that's something that I think we need to confront critically I mean uh, if we are uh, seriously talking about the the physical embodied experience and the non-humans and and, and and that that so I mean I see a lot of interest in the content level so talk about this uh create content about this but the, the creation of the content itself uh, go against the what the, the content is saying 
So just throwing up this that that point of view, yeah. So maybe to take it to the small groups. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. This is a moment also where we are uh, again playing and uh, trying to also uh, develop into those words that uh, an idea that you brought. I think maybe if you go to uh, individual groups, there might be more voices that you can listen and questions directly. Maybe uh, we will have that opportunity. Sierra, do you want to maybe? I, I'm very pleased also um, th through your work. Or I, I was I was thinking on this meeting how to uh, feel through my body anything that will happen today in this so i'm uh, i'm very i have lots of uh, adjectives to say but basically thank you very much because uh, those all all your words right now are making me uh, learn and uh we're <laughs>